In this video, we're going to talk about shaping the rocker and foil of your blank after you cut the outline and square it up. If you ordered a custom cut close tolerance blank from us and designed it in AccuShaper, then you won't have to do this step. It'll already be done uh, by our thermal hot wire cutter to your design, so you can skip that. Uh, but if you're using a stock blank, then most likely you're going to have to adjust the rocker. Rocker is the bottom curve of the board, and you can check out our surfboard design guide for standard numbers for nose and tail rocker, depending on the type of board and the type of waves that you're surfing. And foil is the amount of foam from nose to tail, how that's distributed. So you want you know, a thin nose and tail, uh, and then more foam around your chest for, to float for paddling. So that's foil, it's a distribution of foam, and we're going to have to adjust that a little bit. Since we typically use surfboard blanks that are longer than our final shape, we can take our outline template and slide it back and forth to get more rocker in the nose already in the blank or in the tail. Normally we'll, we'll use the nose and we'll slide the template up and use that natural rocker in the nose and then adjust that. Uh, if you put the template in the middle of the blank, then you'll have to adjust both sides. So you just want to minimize the shaping by choosing where your template will go before you cut the outline out. I recommend using hand tools when shaping your first few boards at least. Uh, it's just way easier, less mistakes. Uh, once you put a power tool between you and the foam, you really don't have any feel for what you're doing and you usually overshape. And that's, we don't want to overshape. We want to always sneak up on what we want. Uh, more foam, more fun. As we say at Greenlight all the time. Uh, make sure you can float so you can catch waves. So uh, here we go. We're going to rocker this and foil it out. First thing we're going to do is bring the blank to thickness. So this is a two and three quarter inch thick blank and I'm going to make this into a two and a half inch thick board. We always get a blank that's slightly thicker than our final product, uh, so we have room to shape it. But you don't want to get a blank that's three inches thick for two and a half. It's just more work. It's just a waste of time getting rid of the foam. So uh, pick a blank that's close to your end result. Uh, we manufacture blanks in every quarter inch increment, so two and a quarter, two and a half, two and three quarters, three, three and a quarter. So just pick a quarter inch more than your final shape, or if you're going for, say, two and five eighths, thick in the end, go for a two and three quarter blank and you only have an eighth inch to take off. You can certainly order a blank at two and a half thick if you're making a two and a half thick, thick board, but when you put a concave in the bottom, that's going to make the board thinner in the middle is where we really uh, measure from is the, is the stringer, the center line. So when you put a concave in there, say an eighth inch deep, you're going to take an eighth inch out of the final thickness. Um, so that's why we get a blank that's thicker. So take, in, take that into account. Pre-design your board and know what you're going to do in the end. So if you're going to do a concave, account for that thickness right now when we're taking it down and leave that in because we're going to scoop out the bottom uh, putting a concave in. But if you're going to do a flat bottom, which flat bottoms absolutely work great, they're fast and they're, you know, they work great, uh, then just get the blank at thickness, two and a half, and then you have less work to do. You don't have to do this. So less work, the better. With our engineered EPS foam blanks, you can take the thickness out from the deck or the bottom, or some from both. Uh, the density is consistent throughout the whole blank and the same strength from the deck to bottom, so uh, it doesn't matter what side you take the foam from. It's easier to take it from the bottom because of the rocker curve, and I'll show you that in a second, um, how the nose is affected with the tools because of the curve. If you're using polyurethane foam blanks, you want to take the foam from the bottom because of the way they mold those, they're stronger on the deck where your feet and knees hit and softer on the bottom. So you don't want to take that harder foam off the deck. So you always want to take the foam off the bottom of a polyurethane foam deck. But we make, e we make and shape EPS. We like that more than poly. Stronger, lighter, faster, more dynamic. So that's what we do here at Greenlight. So same process in polyurethane as well. All these techniques are the same EPS or polyurethane. So let's get started on bringing this blank to thickness. Blank to thickness. Two ways you can measure. You can use calipers. 
slide them into the, onto the stringer in the center of the board where your thickest point is. Back and forth here. And you can measure it. There's different kind of calipers. We have uh, ones with graduated uh, measurements on it, or you can just use the cheaper ones and use a tape measure here, two and three quarters. Or on EPS, since it's a square cut blank, you can just measure the side because you know it's straight all the way across, two and three quarters for this one. Now we're going to use a trim plane. We always want to start on the stringer because the stringer is the hardest part of the board. So we're going to shape the stringer down first, close to where we want, and then we'll bring the foam down to that. That's the same process for bringing the blank to thickness as well as when you adjust your rocker and your foil later on in, in this video. So we're always going to work the stringer first and then bring the foam down to that stringer. And then you won't overshape the foam and you know, start putting curves in the board where you don't need them. All right, we'll put our weight on the blank so it doesn't slide around. And what we want to do is we're going to use the trim plane and just take that stringer down. And start from the middle. Because the stringer's curved, the wood grain is going to change direction somewhere along your stringer. So you'll find that out when your, when your trim plane just stops. So simply just turn it the other way and start planing from the other direction. Now we'll use the Rasputin tool to scrub the foam all the way down to the stringer so everything's flat straight across and when you hit the stringer you know you're done. The, this tool won't cut the stringer because it's a hard material. This is foam shaping grit. So I like to put my chest up against the board and pull at myself pretty aggressively. You'll see here I've gotten it flat and here I didn't scrub as much so we're going to bring that foam down. So we know this is flat straight across down to the stringer. And through the midpoint of the board you just step to the side. So you can also bring the blank to thickness with a power planer. Uh, we have a video on that in our secret vault. Check that out. But I really recommend doing it by hand with a trim plane. This is a whole different animal, a whole different game. And uh, in the beginning, this will wreck your board. So when you get confident, then you can start using power tools. Stick with hand tools in the beginning. So we have a video on that in the secret vault. Check it out.
First thing we'll do is take a straight piece of wood and lay it on the blank on the bottom rocker and we'll level it, finding the apex of the rocker. And then we can measure from that level line down to the bottom of the nose and tail to find what our rocker in the blank is and mark whatever rocker we want to shape into it from that level line. And if you're shaping a long board, you can use that straight edge if it's too short and just prop it up with a roll of tape like I have here and then use that level line to mark your rocker uh, numbers and dimensions. In this longboard nose rider, I'm aiming to shape three inches of nose rocker, so I'm marking three inches from that level line on the end of the stringer. This is what I call the stair step method of adjusting the rocker, where we take the trim plane and we'll start approximately three inches away from the tail or the nose if you're adjusting nose rocker, and we're going to cut off the tail from that point. Then we're going to step up toward the center of the blank, about six inches from the tail, let's say, and then we'll cut, start cutting there off the tail again. We'll move back 9, 12, whatever, 15, 18, whatever you want to do, how far you want to go up the blank, depending on your design. And every time we use this method to cut the stringer all the way off the tail from multiple points stepping up toward the middle of the board, we're going to create a nice, smooth, continuous curve for our rocker. You want to continue this stair-stepping cut method as many times as you need to to achieve your uh, rocker to the point where you marked on the blank. And now we'll use the Rasputin tool again, just like we did to get the thickness down, and just scrub the blank down to the stringer. When you see that channel erased, then you're done. Notice that I've moved the tail of the blank directly on top of the racks so I get the most pressure downwards with the Rasputin tool in that area. This yellow part represents the nice smooth curve in the tail rocker we just shaped in. Adjusting foil is the same exact process. Mark where you want to go. Trim the stringer and then bring the foam down. So you'll see in the nose, if we're cutting the stringer with the trim plane here, that nose curve, the, the planer, see that light underneath right there? That blade's not hitting the stringer because the way the tool, it's a flat tool on a curve. So what we need to do is rotate the tool to about a 45 degree angle. Go a little deeper. Tighten that up real nice. So the grain's gone this way, so I have to start from here.
All right, let's talk some numbers. In general, I like to aim for a 5 ace thick tail when, when I foil um, for more performance designs and uh, three-quarter inch tail for groveler, smaller wave boards with wider tails. Um, one thing to mention is you want to make sure that you keep enough foam in the tail for your fin boxes to sink in. So you don't want to make your tail too thin when you foil. Always keep some volume in that. I've seen a couple a couple people shape like knifey rails all the way in the tail and it just doesn't work. You can't even uh, surf that really too well. So um, yeah, just make sure you have a nice flow and keep it keep some thickness out all the way to the rail. So three quarters to five eighths thick tail is what I would recommend at the, at the tip when you're foiling. And then in the, in the nose area, I generally just do a half inch thick. And then, um, you know, if you're doing an old school design, it'll be thicker with a beak nose, like an old single fin or something. But aim for a half inch. You don't want it too thin. That you don't want it to break off. It doesn't matter. So, half inch, three quarter to five eighths in the tail, and you'll be good to go. So now that we've done our foil and rocker, we can move on to the next step, which is our bottom contours. So check that out. Thanks.